Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Um, grab your vices, get ready to chill out, and let's get straight to it. This is episode 16 of Straightforward with Miss B, um, with special guest co-host A.G. What's up? Whoa there, what's happening? What happening? You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that was like a song, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. That That's some day. down south stuff That's there. The crunk. That's the days. Right. That was <sighs> I be missing those times. I tell you the truth. The the nineties, early two thousands was oh, yeah, the truth. great, the great truth. time to be alive. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> great time to be alive. So how how how's your week been, man? It's going, it's going pretty. Had a little scare yesterday. My wife, um, I had to take the rest of my life to the hospital. But, oh my god! Yeah, she I mean, ended up having like a little sick, a little cyst at first. A what? Yeah, it was a ovarian cyst. Oh okay. And it had burst and mm-hmm. it caused some real sharp pains, and she didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, she fully recovered. She cussed me out just a minute ago. So oh, well, she fully good. recovered. <laughs> Everything good. <laughs> I said, you back. <laughs> right. <laughs> In full effect. <laughs> well, tell her, you know, I, you know, I'm glad that she's doing good and back in good health. And as soon as she felt some pain, she Took herself on to the hospital. That's what you got to do. You can't let those little, you know, those little internal yeah. signs be ignored. We need to take ourselves. As soon as something don't feel right, you got to take yourself to the doctor, the hospital. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How was your, how was your week? Um, My week has been very, very busy. Like I texted you the other day, I was like, wait a minute. What are we even going to discuss? <laughs> discuss today on the podcast because... My brain has just been fried, man. Just sometimes it'd be a lot going on, working and stuff like that. And, you know, my mind just be be everywhere. But outside of that, um, what else went on? I was trying to give myself some, put some, uh, for the ladies out there who know about or have had soft locks or goddess locks, I was trying to do them myself. So I went to the uh, went to the beauty supply store and I bought all this hair lock hair and came home and it was a failed failed mission so Are i had to do your own hair? yeah i was trying to do my own <laughs> i was trying to do my own little braids and put my locks in <laughs> but what i've come to realize now that i'm older i have hair like my grandmother's like my grandmother's hair um is very soft it's like it's it's extremely soft it's kind of thin and I'm like oh, okay so it's it, it wouldn't even really hold the lock in like you have to use like this crochet needle thing and you know put it on you can ask your wife about it I'm sure she know what I'm it's talking about no not what no 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 <laughs> I didn't feel like going to pay somebody several hundred dollars to do this now. I, when I get, no wonder I would try it myself. Right. Sometimes I, you know, I'd rather just, like I said, I'm, it's so crazy. I like to spend money, lots of money on food, clothes, stuff like that. But when it comes to like stuff that I can just practice and I can, you know, watch a couple of YouTube videos and figure out how to do something, then I try to do that, you know, save my money and do it on my own. But it was a failed mission. The, the little crochet lock didn't stay in my hair. It kept slipping out. So I said, okay. So I went back to the beauty supply store today, actually, early a couple of hours ago. And the girl was like, well, you must not have been doing it right. Because, you know, my hair is very, you know, kind of thin. And she was just telling me about her self. And, um, you should have asked her, what the hell? Do you want to come on over here with me? There Man, I ain't invite no strangers to my crib. I don't know that girl. Yeah, no, she could do it. She she wasn't, she wasn't gonna be doing it on my head, but so I bought some new hair. Um, so I'm just gonna do regular old like box braids in my hair, and I'm gonna see how it turn out. So, you know, wish me luck on that. 
So you did this before, or this something new? It's something new. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah, I can see you something older, baby. Go get your hat done. <laughs> okay, I take all cash apps, Venmo's, Zelle. <laughs> I take it all. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try to do it myself. I told my mom I might need her to help with the back. I think I could do the front myself. But I I won't be able to really see the back of my head too good, so I might just get my mom to uh to do the back to put the braids in in the back. But we'll see, we'll see. Hopefully it turn out right. But anyway, speaking of females and women, that's kind of what our focus is on today's um you know episode here. Megan Thee Stallion. I know everybody by now has seen the video. I mean, the interview that she um, recently did with Gail King, and it seems like before we started the Megan, it seemed like Gail King always get these crazy interviews. She was interviewing R. Kelly. He looked crazy. Now Megan Thee Stallion get on there, and she looked crazy as ever. But, uh, but yeah, so. There's a bunch of hoopla going on this week with Megan Thee Stallion's interview and how, you know, she was sniffling and, and kind of fake crying and talking about, you know, she never slept with Tory Lanes, but then, you know, I guess Tory Friends was kind of, you know, stating on social media that that's a lie. And it was just a whole lot going on. Did you see the interview? Yeah, I've seen it. Snippets of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought we already came to the conclusion that they slept together. Right. The best friend <laughs> the best friend kind of put that out there. You and said I thought Tori did it too. Right. Yeah. So <clears throat> I don't know. Megan Thee Stallion. You just really it's almost like she's putting women, um, women and especially black women in particular just kind of in a in a in an awkward position because on one hand we want to support her and you know support her on this we don't believe in you know abuse and you know things of that nature and it's all about female empowerment um but on the flip side we don't want to you know we don't want to stand behind somebody who clearly you know, keep change. They keep changing their story, <laughs> and she's lying. <laughs> I'm not gonna say she's lying. We don't know for sure, but it seems as though she's not telling the truth all the time. And the stories keep changing, like versus what she initially told police in the police report, versus to what she might have said in the court documents, and then now in this interview, it's like, come on, like what's the what's the real story, and why she can't right. just keep it real? It's almost like she lied from the beginning. And she didn't have a choice but to continue on with the lie. Right. So now she's in a position to where it's like, I got to keep lying. <laughs> she just got to keep she got to keep lying at this point. She just can't bust she, out and tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, she lie like my she lie like my little me yo. <laughs> watching you do something and you say you ain't do it. Right. <laughs> I just tell you, I'm not really I'm not telling you asking you if you did it. I'm I'm telling you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Just go, you know, go go to the grave with the lie, right? And everybody knows it's a lie. And everybody know it's a lie. So Megan the Stallion, sweetheart, at some point. When Tori gets a chance to verbally, you know, just kind of truly express it's everything that happened, um, then everything is going to come out. What I did do, though, is um, I watched Academics, DJ Academics. You know, he covers a lot of hip-hop news. He's a streamer, blogger, things of that nature, very popular in the hip-hop uh, community. Um, I watched his breakdown of Megan Thee Stallion's interview, and he had kind of brought up some, um, you know, great points. He brought up the fact that, you know, the best friend, um, Kelsey, how she, you know, when the incident first happened, how she had, you know, went on live and was just telling this background story of her and Megan's relation. I mean, friendship, talking about how she's had several men and Megan have she it was about four or five dudes that she would be talking to and then next thing you know she'll find out Megan unslept with them behind her back 
you know, and she was just saying that this was, you know, this situation here that happened was kind of in that same realm um, where, you know, she kind of found out, hey, you fucking around with Tori behind my back. She got an M.O.? She got an M.O., clearly. So it's like, you know, why would, <clears throat> why would, um, why would a best friend make up something like that? So some people believe that kind of what happened in the situation may have been an argument ensued inside that van, I mean, inside the truck, and Megan wanted to get out. I guess she had got to the level of, you know, being very frustrated, wanted to get out of the van. When she got out of the van, somebody had a gun. And I don't think it, she shot herself. I don't think she shot herself. I think they were struggling with the gun. Where she got shot at? <clears throat> it in seems like, yeah, she got shot in the foot, but it wasn't like a, a direct shot to the foot. It was a shot as if somebody may have shot in the air. The bullet might have hit the ground and it popped up and hit it in the back of the, you know, back of the foot or something of that nature. But you could tell it was a struggle with the gun. I don't know if Tori was trying to maybe take it out of whoever the other person was that had it, maybe Kelsey. Um, but and we know what you think, hell. I remember. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that crazy ass story you told me. <laughs> but either way, <laughs> either way, she got shot. She lied to the police initially, stating that she cut her foot on the glass because in the Gail thing, she was saying how she was trying to kick herself, like kicking her foot against the, the window of the, of the van. Right. <clears throat> so she, you know, I guess that was another reason why she lied and told him that, you know, Hey, you know, that's from broken glass. Um, and she was like, at that point she was watching out for her friends and with the, you know, every, all that police brutality shit that was going on around that time and Black Lives Matter movement. She was fearful that the police may try to, you know, possibly kill her friends. So she, the lie was all to protect them. So she say. So she say. But then academics brought up the point where if you if you felt as though you was protecting everybody in that initial moment that by the time you got to the hospital, you've now calmed down. You know what I mean? Kind of assessed the situation. You're in a safe place in the hospital. You're talking to doctors. At that point, why did Megan tell the truth? Like, why didn't she say exactly what have happened? What had happened at that point? If she was in a safer environment, she a soldier. No shit. Child, she wasn't no soldier. <laughs> I don't know. I just think whatever whatever happened, we could tell the the plan <laughs> the plan is backfiring now um, against her. Um, so I don't know. When the, when the court date? I think they pushed it back again. Um, I want to say May, June, or maybe later this year. Where is it gonna be in California or somewhere? Yes, yeah, in California. Cause I might go. <laughs> You gonna be our uh, inside. I'm live. <laughs> you gonna be live on the scene. <laughs> you gonna be out there like with uh Black China Mama outside the courthouse, <laughs> speak, speaking to TMZ and shit, right? <laughs> yeah, inside, nigga. I'm tired of all these lies. A mess. Right. Uh, you know, a lot don't care who tell it, man. I tell you the truth. But speaking of Black China, um. Yeah, I'm sure you've been watching a little bit, seeing what's going on. Black China was trying to sue the Kardashians, so they they finally made it to court, and they have been, oh, child, they've been having a lot going on. People testifying and all these statements against Black China and vice versa. Oh, yeah, all that shit she's been doing on TV for the goddamn background, huh? You think so? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Mm. Especially with that Kardashian one, the um, the one went uh, when she testified today. The one went with um, uh, with Tiger. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yeah, well Kylie Jenner was saying that she was threatening Tiger and Rob apparently. She said Tiger got a big ass scar mm-hmm. on him with Black China did. Well she like she didn't cut. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, China is definitely abusive. Well, allegedly. Let me say allegedly on this podcast because we don't know these people for real, for real. <laughs> But al- allegedly, she's abusive, and, you know, Rob got on the stand as well. You know, Black China has a daughter uh, with Rob, and he um, he claimed that he was abused by Black China on five different occasions. Um, he also went on to state recently that um, he got engaged to her, uh, but he really didn't love her. You know, he didn't love her at all. But I'm like, why would you get engaged? Did she put a gun up to your head and say, nigga, you know, propose to me? Uh, like, <laughs> like, how did that go down? <laughs> well, she been calling him a fuck nigga several times. Oh, yeah, she been doing that. <laughs> That's just who China is. China, <laughs> China is from the rough streets of what, Baltimore, D.C. I think that's where she's originally from. Child, she's yeah, from the hood. Yeah, I know she called him the fuck nigga. Her nigga mama fuck is nigga. hood all the way. Yeah, that's why I say all that shit gonna backfire against them. Oh, they gonna look at all that. Yeah, yeah, they gonna look at all that. They they definitely, you know, trying to paint a picture of, you know, who she really is, you know. This angry, you know, probably black woman, black woman come from troubled past but you know it it can china's lawyers can say hey you know maybe the environment i grew up in you know mold me into being this this type of woman i'm traumatized i'm dealing with ptsd i mean it's things that her side can say you know as a defense but with all of that i i would say with with her character i want to know how much will her character impact the lawsuit because you know essentially she's trying to get money they blocked oh, her she the one filed a lawsuit. right they blocked her from um supposedly getting a second season of that you know black china and rob show and then and then i think at one point it was going to be a reality show just maybe centered around her but the family, you know, and Chris Jenner was blocking those opportunities for China. So she's kind of suing them for that. So I wonder, you know, even though they say all these bad things about her in court, you know, how much of that will the judge and jury allow it to have some impact on whatever, you know, settlement or, you know what I'm saying? Monetary. Yeah, so she held herself. Right. Terrible. Right. Right. Yeah, I don't know, but we want to look into one of the questions that I did have as far as, like, black women in dealing with anger today. You know, we talk about, just for people who maybe this may be their first time listening in, we talk about pop culture topics, you know, hot topics, but, you know, we try to take it a bit further and dive deep a little bit into um, other things surrounding, you know, surrounding situations, so... With this particular case and all of these abuse claims coming out about Black China, um, one of the questions I had was, you know, why do society tend to overlook abusive relationships where the woman is the aggressor? Like we hear about, you know, men being no women, you know, a lot of us may have grew up in those type of households or, you know, may have had grandparents who you know, had to deal with um, domestic abuse as well. Um, A lot of times we do hear about, you know, the men being the aggressor in the situation. But every now and then, the women being the aggressor in in abusive um, claims coming out, you know, seems to come to light, right? So we're starting to hear a lot more stories about women who be (laughs) beating up or intimidating men. Intimidating it's me. It's hard to believe. That's why. You think it's so? It's hard to believe. That's why <laughs> people don't believe it. I'm like, oh yeah. You know, they don't want to believe that this woman been beating on this man. Mm-hmm. 
Right. That's the only excuse I could see. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, just speaking on, like I spoke on earlier about, you know, women, <clears throat> women, like, having to grow up in certain environments and seeing certain things, you know, like they say, sometimes you just kind of grow up, you grow up either, you know, having those same type of uh, traits, you know, that your, your, your parents and your grandparents may have had. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes those are not positive traits. They can be something very, very negative, you know. Um, so it's not far-fetched that women, you know, beat up men. And then, you know, you have you have men out here in the world who 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 are not as uh alpha types or, you know, carry just this this um huge level of masculinity. Um they may be a little sensitive and submissive. Um and you, you know across one of them. <laughs> and hey across one of them. Alpha females. And when you write, <laughs> when you come across an alpha female <laughs> and you're a sub, very submissive, sensitive guy, then yeah, she gonna you she might. She's going to rough you up a little bit. She's going to rough you up. <laughs> She's going to put you in the chokehold. She's going to pit you all kind of crazy. She's going to talk to you crazy. She's going to pistol whip you. <laughs> it ain't <laughs> why do we always be laughing at this shit man <laughs> it ain't it's supposed to be way. serious <laughs> gonna do you bad asshole and you can't leave <laughs> and you, you can't go nowhere you can't go nowhere <laughs> You can't go nowhere, man, but it's it's sad. <laughs> it is sad. It is so sad, man. It's so sad. But I you know, like I said, we know of women, I know of some very strong women like that. Now, I don't know the extent of them being abusive to, you know, to whoever their partners are, but I know some strong women out there that would they'll cush your eye. In a heartbeat, they don't care. They don't care who it is, and it just it just be a lot, man. But I wonder if women who do, you know, <clears throat> who do suffer from anger issues, um, I wonder, you know, what would be steps to kind of help them outside of maybe some counseling therapy. Like, or will they ever change, you know? Maybe it's just it's just in them, and that's just who they are. Maybe counseling, hopefully, because other than that, the mother just anger. They just angry. Black angry black women. But they can be so sweet. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> usually <laughs> usually abusers are that way. They could be very sweet one moment, sh- they'll shower you with gifts and be all lovey dovey and you know, all of that, and then something may just click in their brain and they just snap. Yeah. That's your ass. <laughs> yeah. That's usually how those, you know, how abusive relationships go. I'm you just have to beat them through it. No kind. You gotta probably slap them first. Or something. I just I pray. Ain't trying to be the but see, if y'all, if you don't slap her first, she gonna slap. <laughs> oh, this nigga just slapped me after I said that. Right. I, I supposed to get. I would have slapped me. Mm-hmm. He slapped me. Oh shit! It's oh. <laughs> yeah, it's some crazy moms like that, and not even with it. Did, I don't know if you watch. Like I, I watch like a lot of true crime stuff, so I may come across like those episodes of Snap. But it's a lot of it's a lot of angry women out there. It is a lot of them, like especially like mothers who have maybe been sent to prison for abusing their kid, like even with the kids. You know what I'm saying? Abuse on kids and killing kids. Like it's a lot of them out there. It's 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 more than I you know I expected. So women, we we got some we got some problems, man, that we need yeah. to deal with for sure. It ain't just the men, huh? Nope. It is not just the men at all. So, everybody, you know, what are your thoughts about that? You know, of course, you can always leave a comment 
Um, you know, how do you feel about women who are the aggressors, abusers um, in a relationship? And, um, you know, how do you feel as though, how do you feel like as though we can change this for them, you know, help these women become better human beings, you know? Leave it in the comments for sure. Um, let's see, what else we got on the list? Um, Elon Musk. Elon Musk acquires Twitter for forty four billion dollars. Damn, he wanted Twitter bad. He wanted Twitter <laughs> bad, and he he has been on Twitter ever since the announcement. Well, he's always on Twitter. I follow him on Twitter, but he's really been trolling on Twitter. Um, this week. He's just been, you know, he's all about freedom of speech. Um, and he thinks as though Twitter, you know, social media sites such as Twitter, um, they have these, you know, all these rules and regulations and they ban people accounts like they banned uh, Donald Trump's account and, you know, other people yeah. such as that who may have strong political, whether right, right wing or left wing, you know, political views. Um, he just feel as though the platform, the platform is considered sort of like the world's town hall meeting where everybody kind of get on there, text out whatever they're thinking, you know, in their messages and stuff like that. And, and people share their opinions on them. Um, but he feels as though everybody should have, you know, the ability to just be able to say what they want to say, you know, whether it we may consider it right or wrong. We supposed to be able to just say what the fuck we want to say, you know. No matter how far it go. No matter how far it go, shit. If you if you on Twitter, it's all sides of Twitter too. You might have what we call Black Twitter. It's like a lot of Black centered discussions go on on t Twitter, whether it's about music, politics, you know, reality shows. Um, then you have, you might have like the left wing side of the political Twitter, you know, you have all those type of comments and, and Twitter threads going on. Then you have what they call freak Twitter. Like you don't see nothing but news and fucking on the timeline, but you, but you, but you have to be, <laughs> but you have to be part of that algorithm. You know, once you start depend it's sort of like Facebook. Who whoever you start following, you know, and liking on their stuff, the algorithm was begin to start showing you more of those type of accounts. You know, that's what it's called. Oh, that shit be like that shit be worrying me sometimes. How you just be thinking about some shit, then you go to your phone and that shit just start popping up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, oh my god. It is scary. This shit ain't right. <laughs> it ain't. It ain't. Because I didn't even put this shit in the <laughs> No, it's all about stuff you liking. Like the stuff you like, the stuff you commenting on. Um the the things that you may be sharing. You know, you might see like a meme or something that's funny and you might be the you might decide to put a little heart on it and, and share it on your page. So then, you know what I'm saying? The algorithm is going to start showing you similar things to yeah. that, you know? And then people, too, I'm talking about just the Internet world in general. Um, I don't know if you ever, like, if you on your phone and you go into your browser, say you're searching for something on the Internet browser, yeah. and it'll be asking you, you go to a website and it tell you, you know, clear your cookies you know you have to clear yeah, your cookies yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like that yeah that sometimes well a lot of times now that's how they end up finding out your personal i guess footprint internet footprint oh, things that you like cookie. right mm -hmm. things that you like so you'll start seeing you might be say for instance you on macy's website right and you looking mm -hmm. at some shoes next thing you know you go to twitter I mean, not Twitter. It, they don't do it too much on Twitter. Facebook but Facebook is it. bad yeah, with, yeah, Facebook is truly bad. You go on Facebook, you see this Macy's ad pop up with the same pair of <laughs> shoes you was just looking at. You know, that shit, you heard the hell out of me, man. It's like, man, God you damn. You explain that shit to me, but if you, can, if you can explain how I just be thinking about some shit and that shit pop up. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> how the fuck that happened. Right. So all of that... 
come into play, you know, now with these facial recognition phones, like my phone is facial recognition. So they, they got my internet footprint. Cause they always should, <laughs> they always be showing me stuff, even on Instagram, but Instagram is owned by Facebook, but they always showing me stuff. I just looked at online. Like I said, I'll be on Nordstrom's or something. And they'll show me the same outfit. I just looked at. So, Hey, it is what it is. This, that's the world we live in. I don't really, um, like you said, it kind of scare you a little bit. At first it did, but now I'm just like, Shh, it's me. Y'all know, y'all probably know my where I live. Y'all got my phone. Y'all got all my information. <laughs> <laughs> so, me if you want me, right? <laughs> like I ain't doing yeah. that. <laughs> I ain't doing that bad over here, so it don't even matter, you know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, congrats to I guess Elon Musk. It's gonna be interesting to see how this all plays out. You know, once he take over ownership of Twitter, I know that he plans to um no longer uh make as far as like stock. It's not gonna be a public company. He's gonna make it private. Um, so I know I got a couple of shares um in Twitter stock. So I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Um, But, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with Twitter. Um, What else? You talked about what? Random news. 42 Doug and 6ix9ine. Um, those are rappers. AG, what's going on with these fellas? They want a pay-per-view. <laughs> Boxing match for a half a meal. Cause um six nine he them I, I forgot exactly what he did but he brought a an innocent bystander with forty two thugs headed into a a beef mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying this man ain't had nothing to do with it but you 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 were involved with him in it so forty two said I, I want you want to fight him oh um, my god oh uh, what's the, so uh what's the name say he wanted to fight forty two first. <laughs> Who's what's her name? Six nine. Yeah, old six nine. Oh God. Yeah, I think I think what he said. He just don't want to go to jail. <laughs> he said, "I just don't want to go to jail, man. You got a problem? You ain't gonna send me back to jail." <laughs> oh my God, child, that fight would be hilarious. Cause if you ever seen forty two Doug, forty two Doug is like four <laughs> feet tall. He is so short. And I don't think six nine that tall either. I think six nine maybe about five. He might be my height, five four. He's not tall either. So that'll be. I it'll make some money, baby. Yeah. Put it on pay per view. Yeah, it'll make some money though. You know these cool. kids, these kids cool. be cool. all for the. Right, the they kids be all for the job. Mm hmm. Somebody gonna fight this week for a meal. Right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a quick meal, real quick. Right. Oh, I forgot about this latest episode with the baby. Did you see that? What did he do? I seen some with him the baby. when he hit his his artist. I think they was backstage somewhere, oh, yeah, and he yeah. punched the artist. They got in a fight, so everybody's concerned <laughs> concerned about the baby because <laughs> he Everybody speaking of anger that. issues. Right. Speaking <laughs> of anger management, the guy he needs some help. He now he needs some help. He gonna take off on you yet? <laughs> it's the drugs. I don't know what it is, but he shouldn't. He shouldn't. He need to learn how to. That's displaced anger, man. It's coming from somewhere. But he he yeah. need to learn how to be able to deal with things. What is it called? Conflict resolution. He need to be able to deal with certain conflict in a different manner. Lean. The lean. I thought the lean make you move slow. That's oh, not, but that it, it, it give you mood swings though. Oh, um, hey, you angry? Mm. Uh-huh. I don't know. He need to. He need okay. to. He need help though. That's for sure. Cause he gonna, yeah. he just gonna end up in a bad, bad position, man. Yeah. Put him, Put him on his head. Maybe he need to be, you know, he need to be on a card too with 42 Doug and 6 9 Find him some That's opponents. What I'm Once they started, man, they going to make so much money. Somebody going to be fighting every week. 
Yeah. I think I need to get this together, man. Make that little check. Uh, yeah. Somebody need to get something together. That I mean, if they if they're gonna use violence, I would prefer it be yeah, in the ring. Up on each other. <clears throat> right. And after the fight is over with. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree with you. Um, let's see. Is the pandemic over? Pandemic. <laughs> I mean, I still see people. I still I'm seeing people still wearing their masks. I'll still wear my mask in certain places. I done been to plenty of football games, professional, mm-hmm. NBA games, and you ain't finna see no that man. If you don't see a few, of it, the majority. No more masks. I was in the hospital. Yeah. I was at the hospital with my wife yesterday. Mm-hmm. There's people in the hospital. They just shot man. It ain't nothing to it. Oh my god! So once you drop the nothing to it, mm-hmm. you already know. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but you know, I you know, I ain't ready to fully jump out there yet. Like I said, I just kinda pick and choose when I wear my mask. If I'm no like grocery stores, places like that where I know it's gonna be a whole lot of people, I definitely wear my mask. But outside of that, yeah. Uh, no more mask. I hope everybody's out there, you know, keeping themselves safe and healthy as well and, you know, still utilizing their mask, you know, when they feel it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so we thank you guys. You know, we try to keep this 30 minutes to 40 minute episodes here. Um, as I said last week, we're going to um soon start doing video and it will be on youtube so if you haven't already um follow us on youtube at straightforward with miss b and as always peace subscribe to our channels on all streaming platforms Follow us also on social media at Straight Forward MSB. That's S T R 8 F W D M S B. And until next week, peace and love, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>